In this video, we're going to learn how to shuffle the values in a 2D array using C. The first thing we'll do is declare the 2D array. In order to do that, we're first going to define the number of rows and number of columns in the 2D array using preprocessor constants. So we'll have number define rows 5 and number define columns 6. Then down here, we'll declare our 2D array. So we'll have int array with rows, number of rows, and columns, number of columns. So we'll have an array with five rows and six columns. Now, because we defined the number of rows and number of columns using preprocessor constants, I can use rows and calls whenever I need to refer to the number of rows and number of columns in the 2D array. And that's gonna happen quite often. So the next thing we need to do is fill the array with values that we're then going to shuffle and rearrange. So what I'll do is fill the array with the values one, two, three, on up to rows times columns. So I'll create a variable called value and I'll initialize it to one. Then as I loop over each row column index to set the next value, I'll also increment value. So we'll have four int i is equal to zero. i is less than the number of rows and then i plus plus. So this outer loop here is gonna loop over all of the row indexes in our 2D array. Then we're going to make an inner loop that's gonna loop over all of the column indexes in our 2D array. So we'll have four int j is equal to zero. j is less than the number of columns in our 2D array and j plus plus. So right now, if I have array at the index i and the index j, we're going to end up accessing every single row and column index combination by the time these loops are done running. And that's because this outer loop here has the counter variable i that's going from zero up until the number of rows in our 2D array. And then this inner loop here has the counter variable j that's going from zero up until the number of columns in our 2D array. So that means for every row, we're going to go over every column. And here with array at the index ij, we're then going to be accessing every single row and column index combination. And we can set the value here. So we'll have is equal to value. We'll also increment the value by one. So that way the next element in our 2D array is set to the next number up. Now we should print out the 2D array to view its contents. And we'll actually create a function to print out the 2D array because we're gonna to wanna to print it out again after we've done the shuffle. So up here, we'll declare our function. We'll have void print. So the function is called print and it has a void return type because the function doesn't actually need to return any value. It just needs to output the 2D array. The function's parameter is going to be the 2D array itself. So we'll have int array rows and columns. Then down here, we're going to define this function. So we'll copy this and paste it down here. So similar to in our main function, we're going to loop through each row and column index combination in our 2D array, and we're going to output the value at that location. So we'll have four, int i is equal to zero, i is less than rows, i plus plus. Then we'll have four, int j is equal to zero, j is less than the number of columns, j plus plus. Then we're going to output the value at this row and column index combination. So we'll have printf percent two d space and then array at the index i and j. So here we're using percent d to output an integer value, and the value we're outputting is the element in the array at the index i and the index j. Now two here is going to output the value into a field of width two. Now, because we're doing that for all of our column values, it's gonna give the effect of columns that all have the same width. Now, this inner loop here is gonna output all the values in a particular row. After we're done, we'll output a new line character. So that way the next row of values begins on the next line. And then once we've output all the values in the 2D array, we'll also output a new line here as well. Now we can try using our print function to print out this array. So up here, 
in our main function, we'll have print array. And then we'll save, compile, and run our program. And we can see the printout of our 2D array here with the values we expected inside of it. So we could also print out the array again. We could have print array here, and then we could save, compile, and run the program. And we'll get the second printout of the 2D array. So what we're going to do is shuffle the values in the 2D array between these two printouts of the 2D array so we can see the effect of the shuffling. And by shuffling the values in the 2D array, we want the same values to be present in the 2D array, but we want to randomly rearrange their positions. So maybe 18 can end up here where five is, and five can end up here where 22 is. We don't know exactly how it's going to be rearranged. That part needs to be random, but the values in the 2D array should be rearranged. So to do this, we're gonna to have to have randomization in our program. To have randomization in our program, we're going to want to include the stdlib.h library so we can use the rand function. So up here, the first thing we'll do is include stdlib.h. This will allow us to use the rand function, which returns random integers between zero and some very large positive integer. The next thing we'll do is include time.h and unistd.h. So the time library includes the time function, which allows us to access the current time. And the unistd.h library includes the getPID function, which allows us to access the process ID of the running process. So if we want the random numbers that our program uses to be different each time it runs, we need to seed the random number generator with a unique value each time the program runs. The current time and the process ID are gonna help us to construct a unique value to use as our seed value. To provide the seed value, we're going to use the srand function. So down here in main, we're going to call srand. And we supply srand with the unique seed value as an argument. So the function time, when it's provided the argument null, is going to return the current time represented as a large integer. That's going to be different each time our program runs. We're gonna multiply that by the current process ID as given by the getPID function. So the getPID function is going to return the process ID of the current running process. And that's going to be different for each process running on our computer. Multiplying the current time by the current process ID is going to make a very unique seed value. So now that we've seeded the random number generator, we can now make our shuffle function to shuffle our 2D array. So we'll have void shuffle, and we'll have int array rows and calls. So similar to the print function, the shuffle function has a void return type because it doesn't need to actually return anything the function is going to accept as a parameter the array itself. So we'll copy this, and then we'll define our shuffle function down here. So in our shuffle function, we're going to shuffle the 2D array by using loops to go through each element in our 2D array in the same way we do the print function. Only this time, instead of printing out the element, we're going to swap it with another randomly chosen element in the 2D array will randomly generate row and column indexes in order to randomly choose this other element. So we'll declare a variable int rand row to store the random row index. We'll also declare a variable rand underscore call to store the random column index. We'll also declare a variable temp to help us perform the swap of the two elements. Then we can loop through our 2D array in the same way we have before in our print function and our main function. So we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than rows, i plus plus, and then we'll have four int j is equal to zero, j is less than calls, j plus plus. Now in this inner loop, we're going to use the rand function to generate random row and column indexes. So we'll have rand underscore row is equal to rand modulus rows. So the rand function here is going to return a random integer between zero 
and some very large positive integer, we want to get that number in the range of 0 to rows minus 1 because those are the indexes of the rows in our 2D array. This here is the modulus operator. It's going to return the remainder of dividing this random number by the number of rows in our 2D array. Now that's going to give us a number in the range of 0 to rows minus 1. Because if let's say rows is 5, if we take any non-negative integer and divide it by 5, the 5 possible remainders are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. In other words, 0 to rows minus 1. So this will give us the exact range of values we want. We'll use the exact same technique to generate the random column index. So we'll have rand underscore call is equal to rand modulus calls. So now we have the random row and column index of the element that we want to swap with the current element as given by the indexes i and j. So now we can use our temp variable to perform the swap. We'll have temp is equal to the array at the index i and the index j. So now we've stored the current element's value into temp. This means we can overwrite the array element at the index i and j with the element at the index rand row and rand call. So we'll have array at the index i and the index j is equal to the element at the index rand row and rand call. And then finally, to complete the swap, we'll assign the value stored in the temp variable to the element at the index rand row and rand call. So we'll have array at the index rand row rand call is equal to temp, where temp is the old original value in the array at the index i and the index j. So now we can actually try out our shuffle function. So up here, in between our two printouts of the 2D array, we're going to call shuffle and we're going to pass it the array. So then we can save, compile, and run our program to test it out. And let's see what we get. And we do get a shuffled 2D array. You can see the values have been rearranged, but the values are still present in the 2D array. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, five, six, and so on. All the values are still there. They've just been shuffled and moved around. Now, one thing about our program is that we used preprocessor constants to define the number of rows and columns in our 2D array. And then we use those preprocessor constants all over the place in our code. So for example, we use them in all the loops. We use them when declaring the 2D array. What's nice about that is if we want to change the amount of rows and columns in our 2D array, we just have to change these constants. So I could say 7 and 7 here. We could save, compile, and run the program. And now we get the same results. But this time, it's for a 7 by 7 2D array. So using preprocessor constants for the dimensions of our 2D array makes it really easy to change the dimensions of our 2D array because if we just change the value of the preprocessor constants, that change will occur throughout our program wherever we use those preprocessor constants. So this is how we can shuffle the values in a 2D array with C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.